Welcome back to the Metal Exchange. Justin Kramer and Chris Nietzsche here with you for another week. This week, Nightwish's Oceanborn album, going back to 1998. But before we uh, take a deep dive into Oceanborn, Chris, how you doing, buddy? Good. How about you? I am doing very, very well. Uh, very, very well. It's been a good week. I can't, I can't complain. Um, anything, uh, anything strike your fancy this week? Anything you listened to that you enjoyed? Uh, you know, I didn't actually listen to any new albums this week, but I did listen to a handful of singles that I uh, really enjoyed. Um, a band that I really have enjoyed um, this year is a, bad, a band called uh, Ad Infinitum. Um, they're kind of like a symphonic metal band with um, a little bit of death vocals here and there. The lead singer, um, what what was her name again? Bonnie. Um, I'm blanking on it. Melissa Bonnie, is that it? Yeah, that's it. You got it. So she does these beautiful, like, clean vocals, but she also does these, like, really guttural, like, death vocals as well. Um, th- it, they're they're re-releasing their um, their Chapter One album uh, in an acoustic, uh, an entirely acoustic album, and they released a single for "Marching on Versailles." Um, the acoustic version is really cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing the full album of that. I, I also listened to the new Labyrinth single. Um, the absurd circus, which is very fitting nowadays. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed that typical, you know, typical labyrinth. Um, good stuff. I also listened to the new Need single, which I think was was released today, um, and that one is called uh, Nem Mortal, um, and I enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, those are three singles that I listened to today. Um, I think I also listened to couple of new singles from jeff scott soto and soil work as well so just kind of listening to some singles just because i guess just one of those weeks where i don't have a particularly uh you know long attention span <laughs> I, I totally hear you um sometimes you really get a flavor for an album when you hear the single or whatnot and uh, i i haven't heard the ad infinitium easy for me to say um the acoustic version but i love the i love the album from earlier this year so i, I have to check that out and I'll just say that I thought the Labyrinth and the Soto were both very, very good. The, the singles on both of those that I've heard so far have been fantastic. So not not surprising, obviously, but um, just just good to hear, you know, good to hear some new music from both of them. Um, two albums that I think I want to point out, the Morse Principium Est, which is like melodic death metal from, uh, where, are they, where are those guys from? I, I know the, 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 the main guitar player is British, but I think the singer is from Finland. It's just, it's, it's melodic death metal, which is, you know, nothing that we haven't heard before, but it's just really well done. Just professional melodic death metal. Um, they have a bunch of albums. I, I would suggest if you're, you know, a fan of the genre to check out all of them, but I'll say that this particular album, I thought was really, really good. It came out on uh, October 23rd. And then something that really just really blew me away it was something I actually listened to earlier today. There's a band out of Israel called Scardust. They came out with an album called Strangers. Uh, female vocals, uh, much like maybe it was influenced by the fact that I knew we would be talking about Nightwish today, but this is a band that is kind of like an Arion slash Seventh Wonder prog, but with a female singer who is just absolutely phenomenal apparently she does both the vocals and all the composing with the orchestration on the album her name is noah grumman and if i'm mispronouncing that i apologize but this album was fantastic and uh, i'm not really sure many people know about them it it was actually their second full-length release but this is uh, just a step up from the last one highly highly recommended and as always we'll put the links to these bands in the uh description of the podcast just so you can check them out at your leisure but uh really really good stuff and i highly recommended so uh yeah i'm not even sure if you've heard this one but you, you got to check it out what's the name of the album just came out come again what's the name of the album it's called strangers Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, think, I think it came out w- within a couple of days or, or what have you, and I just I just heard it for the first time, and it was just phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely a great album. I I, had, it's probably my biggest surprise of the year. I had heard one of the tracks um, from their previous album through the one of the Prog Power sampler discs that they give out um, at the festival, 
uh, I believe the song is called Arrowhead, and it was just very like very kind of off the wall symphonic prog. Uh, I enjoyed that track a lot, so I would be you're curious. gonna love the new one, and and yeah. that, that is a very good track. But th- they took it to a new level with this disc. This is this is a home run. This is one of the better discs that I've heard this year. So I, I highly recommend it. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll 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 distribute material so that everyone can take a listen. Awesome. Uh, and I guess uh, with that, let's uh, let's turn it to the reason why we're here today, Oceanborn. Uh, uh, one of the absolute most influential albums of all time, I would say. I, I, I think that that's not an understatement. W- would you agree? Uh, I absolutely would agree, um, both from like a symphonic power metal standpoint and also from a personal standpoint. Um, this is kind of a huge album for me. I was excited to um, throw this one at you for our third week. Um, it was released in uh, uh, December 7th, 1998 in Finland by Spine Farm Records, and it was Nightwish's second album. The first album was Angels Fall First. Um, I'm not sure like how how much Nightwish was on the map after their first release. I mean, I'm sure that people were aware of them. I know we, I know I had heard of them, um, but I believe it, it would have been um, Sacrament of Wilderness and Walking in the Air um, were the first two Nightwish songs I ever heard. And at that, they were probably the first two, like, a symphonic power metal with a female vocalist like music I had ever heard. So hearing those tracks was kind of mind blowing to me back in, you know, 1998. Um, but I mean, th- this album, I think really went on. It started Nightwish on a path that they're still just growing I- in fandom. Um, but, uh, this is, I think, to me, like this is where Nightwish really like hit their first real home run of an album. Um, I mean, I don't think that Angels Fall First is a bad album, but I can't say I love it. Um, I, this is really, I think, like where they really just hit their first home run and, and just went out, you know, just went flying out the gate, so to speak. Yeah, Angels Fall First is kind of a a, a different album in the sense that it just. It doesn't. It certainly doesn't have the hooks that this album does, uh, that that Oceanborn does, and it's just, it's it's the orchestration is there. Uh, Tarja's unique vocals, you know, over you know an operatic vocalist over metal, it's it's there, but it's just it's something is missing, and it's not my favorite release, and it's something that I rarely listen to even to this day. Um, I, I would say that Oceanborn is probably the Nightwish album that I've listened to. If not the most, definitely within the top two, just in terms of the number of listens. Although I think we're going to differ as to whether or not it's our favorites, but we'll we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to that. Um, I remember hearing it for the first time when a, a mutual friend of ours actually had one of the first CD burners, you know, way back. We we're going back to uh, like 1999, 2000, and he actually burned me the whole disc because I had never heard the whole thing and. To this day, I still have that CDR somewhere somewhere around here. And I remember keeping it in my car and just going back to it and going back to it and going back to it and listening to it over and over again because it reminded me of everything I loved about a Stradivarius or any of those other Finnish power metal bands, but with the most unique vocals that I had ever heard on a metal disc. Um, I, there, were, there were other female-fronted bands like Within Temptation that I absolutely loved, but it didn't have quite the same um, power metal approach that this particular album does. And I think that Nightwish evolves quite a bit from this album, but you really, I I think to your point, the foundation was set with Oceanborn. Was it Ryan who burned the disc for you? It was. So shout out to Ryan if you're listening. I, I, I still have your CDR and I can't say I played it any time in the last 15 years, but I, I still have it, buddy. So thank you. That's It's so funny because he burned a copy of Wishmaster for me in like... Oh, that's funny. And that was like probably my first full-length Nightwish album at the time. Um, so that's kind of funny. But um, yeah, I, I would tend to agree like that, that first release, um, it was just definitely didn't have that kind of Stradivarius influenced like power metal style to it. It was more kind of like folky gothy kind of, um, 
maybe a little more like maybe I don't know if emo would be the word, but it's just like a little bit. It's not as bombastic. Um, no question. I, I mean, this song just comes out right out the gate, like all all guns ablazing with stargazers, and it just it's just like this. I mean, there's some beautiful ballads on here too, but I mean, the song the 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 upbeat fast paced fast tempo songs are all scorchers in my opinion the, the first half of this album is one hard hitting track after another stargazers stargazers gethsemane devil in the deep dark ocean sacrament of wilderness i mean every one of these songs just hits you like a ton of bricks and i i do think that somewhere towards the middle of this album it does take a little bit of a a different turn un, until we get to pharaoh sales to orion but uh, which is maybe my favorite track on the disc and quite frankly the one that i'm going to recommend everyone listen to it doesn't get the most play or the most love from fans of the band but it happens to be on my favorite track on the disc so justin's pick of the week is going to be pharaoh sales to orion spoiler but but something about this album um the beginning and the end really just it, it, it's it's like it just hits you. It just hits you. And I'll say this. When I first heard the disc, and I and I said I played it over and over and over again, I liked it. And I liked it a lot, but I never loved it. And I think that I actually wound up liking Wishmaster and even once more than I did this album, even though I never played it as much. And I'm not sure why I played Oceanborn as much as I did, given the fact that it wasn't my favorite Nightwish disc. But something about it keeps me coming back. And, and, and I hadn't heard it in years uh, and, and I was happy that you recommended it. And then having heard it now, it's better. It, it's better than I ever remembered it being twenty years ago. So you, if you, you're talking about an album that still holds up very, very well today, I played it twice today. Um, there, there you go. Yeah, I, I couldn't help but just you know knowing that we were going to talk about it. Um, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to listen to this again. And I was playing a video game, and I was like, you know what, this will be good background music. And it's just, I mean, it is just like. Well, I, every song is is fantastic um the ballads are beautifully written um i mean the, you're you're really starting to see um Tuomas, Tuomas Holp Heinen's songwriting like really shine at this point um they do a, a wonderful cover of the song walking in the air which is from a, a animated special called the, the snowman i believe um, i got to be honest with you and, and i'm embarrassed to say this up until about 2 days ago I never knew that was a cover. I just assumed it was a Nightwish original. And I had it pointed out to me literally two days ago. Oh, I've heard this. Somebody, I, I was listening to the album and somebody said, oh, I, I've heard this before. And I said, what do you mean you've heard this before? I, I had no idea it was a cover. It was literally news to me. up until I didn't, two days I didn't ago. know that until recently either, to be honest with you. that was. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. So, um, uh, I, there, when you think, when you talk about, what Nightwish is now and how different, um, especially with their most recent release. Um, when you talk about how different Nightwish is compared to this, um, there are elements where you can hear there's st like, they're still pulling from this era. I think of a song like moon dance, which is like this instrumental kind of jig almost. Like, right. Um, it's it's very similar to some of the stuff that they're doing now, the folky stuff with with Troy playing the pipes and stuff like that. It kind of reminded me of like that newer that newer kind of folky kind of feeling that newer Nightwish has. Um, I feel like like if I could tell like a a, a personal story, um, I didn't see Nightwish live until right before Annette had left the band, and so. The first time I saw them live, I was absolutely, no pun intended, floored. Um, it was just such an unbelievable experience. Um, but I just, I noticed that like, they just didn't touch a lot from this album, which was disappointing to me because I love so many songs from it. And it would be a few years later, and I was with you at uh, the Manhattan Center to see Nightwish, and it was the very first show of their endless forms most beautiful tour um not just first u.s show but the first show so like there were no spoilers there was no check in the set list we didn't have a clue what they were going to play and somewhere towards the second half of the show um the the ocean born album art like flashed onto the wall and they started playing stargazers and i about just lost my mind 
Yeah, I, I remember that show like it was yesterday. Uh, that was one of the most memorable shows I've ever seen in my life. And I actually went on YouTube today, and that entire show is up on YouTube. It's not the greatest recording, but I went back just so I could watch Stargazers again. That was... The, the, the beauty of Floor and the band is that she can go back and she can sing a lot of that old material, if not all of that old material, just because her voice is so great. So when you go see the band now or when you, any time in the last five years... You get these, uh, you know, these throwbacks, whether it's Sleeping Sun or Stargazers, that you just, I quite frankly missed as much as I love the Annette albums. I, I, I'm not, I don't think she's the best live vocalist, but I'll say, that, but the, the two albums she was on, probably my favorite Nightwish albums, if I'm being honest. Um, but that being said, she couldn't, she couldn't sing a lot of this material live while Flora, Flora can sing anything live. And, 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 I, and what a treat it is to hear some of this stuff live because as good as it is on the album, every one of these songs is a killer live. Absolute top-notch live album. I, every one of the songs that I've ever heard is fantastic. Yeah, and on their last tour, they were doing kind of like a throwback, a lot of throwback tunes, and they they played Gethsemane and they played Passionate, or I'm sorry, Sacramento Wilderness, and that's right. It was really cool getting to see some of these like, I don't know if I'd really call them deep cuts, but it was just just stuff that they hadn't really been focusing on playing live since uh, Tario was still in the band. Um, which at this point, it's been a, it's been years now since she's she left the band. Um, so speaking of Tarya, um, what what are your uh, feelings about her vocals and, and where she kind of fits into the, the pantheon of, of of metal vocalists and what her legacy is? She is one of the most influential singers of all time, and I think that that's why she's had such a successful solo career and why she's been you know many fans are still clamoring for her to come back to Nightwish. And P.S., you know, I think about Halloween doing, you know, the Pumpkins United tour with all three of their vocalists on stage at the same time. Uh, I can speak for every Nightwish fan in the world when I say they need to do the tour with all three vocalists, just because I think that they do all bring different things to the table. I mean, they are so much like Halloween, where they're just so different from one another. Um they really just need to, 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 to make that happen and make it just a, you know, a two and a half or a three hour blowout show where they just kind of touch at everything from the entire catalog. But to answer your question directly, uh, Tarja was never my favorite Nightwish vocalist, although I do um, think that those three or four discs with her are just some of the most seminal works uh, of any symphonic metal band Ever and 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 when I think about that, I actually went back quickly and and I just thought about some of the bands that have been so influenced by Nightwish and clearly this particular album. And I'll just name a few. It just you know some really obscure bands that literally base their entire catalog on old Nightwish. You have bands like uh, I don't know Pythia from England, where it's it's like listening to a, a, an Oceanborn clone. Amberian Dawn from Finland, uh, HB released an album. They're, they're a real obscure band. They released an album in 2008 called Frozen Inside. And if you didn't know any better, you thought you were listening to, to Old Night Wish from this era. There's a Czech band called Wishmasters. They released an album in 2014 called Beatrice. I mean, you can tell from the name of the band, Wishmasters, they're they're pulling heavily from from old Nightwish, and a band from Spain called Neobeth, which again, just just those operatic vocals over symphonic power metal, and I, and I hesitate to call new Nightwish power metal because I think it's they've kind of evolved away from this, although you can hear it in certain songs, but th this era of Tarja, which really started with Oceanborn, is is still being dare I say copied, but at the very least, a, a heavy influence on so many bands, some of which I just listed today. It's, 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 it's remarkable. I absolutely agree. Um, I feel like the departure from Tarya was kind of necessary, though, because I feel like the band was kind of maybe cornering, like cornering themselves or just because like you're, you're, you're just kind of sticking to like this, this like operatic vocal style where I, and maybe like Annette wasn't the right choice because it was such a, like an such opposite way. It was kind of going yeah. more to a more like 
a, a more traditional, almost like pop style vocalist, which God bless, like worked, I thought, um, for the two albums she was on. But I think that they really hit the nail on the head with Floor because Floor is able to kind of do what both of those singers can do. And I think that it broadens the range of what Nightwish can can put out um, by having a singer who's a little less of a one, a kind of a one note, um, so to speak, you know, act. Yeah, I, I completely agree that, and I guess that's the magic of Floor that she can sing. She can sing, uh, you know, "Devil in the Deep Dark Ocean," and then she could sing something off, uh, you know, and quite frankly, she could sing something off Imaginarium, and 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 it works somehow. It just works because she's so um, diverse, or I guess just able to do a little bit of everything and do it well. Uh, I was lucky. I saw Nightwish with Tarja. I saw them once. Back at Prog Power 4. This was back in 2003 in Atlanta, Georgia. Ironically, um, at the time, this was, I think, the Century Child tour, if, if, if memory serves me correct. They only played one album, uh, sorry, one song from Oceanborn on the album, and that was Walking in the Air, which was great, but I guess I was expecting to hear them to play you know, something else off the album. And I, and I was a little disappointed that they didn't, although that was a phenomenal show. Um, and, and we'll send out a video so that you can see that cover in its entirety from, from the show that I, that I was at. But I, I was, I was hoping that you, that I was going to get something like a stargazers or just one other nod to this album. Um, because, you know, it, it hadn't been that far removed and, and they ha- didn't have a whole catalog of material at that point. Uh, but no, they, we just got the one walking in the air and it was, it was, fan- it was phenomenal. Yeah, unfortunately, I to this day have not seen Taria perform live, um, which is definitely a bucket list. I I, I don't want to diminish by saying that um, it was the right call for Nightwish to move on from Taria. I don't want to diminish that. I think that she is without a doubt a legend in in symphonic power metal and metal in general, uh, which is why she still has a successful solo career. Um, I, I think that her vocals are special, like just kind of a one in a million, like, you know, she broke that mold at a time where there wasn't really much, or at least n- not like well-known bands doing that kind of style. And um, her, the way that she can do a fast paced power metal song like stargazers and then switch over to like a swan heart or walking in the air, like really like, you know, ballady, like mellow tune. I mean, she definitely was able to just rock like all of these songs. I just think that like after a while, you know, they were kind of just making like a derivative version of ocean born repeatedly. And I, I think that, moving on to those later albums, you could definitely start to hear them like branch off, branch out musically, uh, especially when they hit Imaginarium. I felt like that was probably their most like real, da- like really daring uh, release where they just, I think they really went outside their comfort zone um, to make like a, a really like almost um, like a, almost like a music, like a heavy metal musical. Yeah, and 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 I'll I'll I will put that album up against anything. That is my favorite Nightwish album, and I know that some people will say the vocals aren't the best. I I understand that, but from just from the 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 the, the melody and and the way that they kind of just put themselves out there on that album, but still staying true to form, that is my favorite Nightwish release, and I've yet to hear anything better since that album. Um, but that being said, this album I think is. Uh, genre defining in, in many in many senses um just because of the fact that it's it's just so uh it was so unique for the time and it was really the first album of its kind you know that that had this type of style over a more traditional power metal which you had been hearing but never with vocals like this so uh, Tarja definitely earns and and continues to earn her place as as one of the premier symphonic metal vocalists of all time. And I guess I'll ask you, you know, I, I kind of gave it away with my, with my choices, uh, with, uh, the Farrell sales to Orion. If you had to pick one track for our listeners to, 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 you know, basically delve into this week for, for anyone that's never heard the actual album, what would you choose? 
Uh, well, I have to say, of the three albums that we've reviewed so far, this is without a doubt the hardest choice uh, I've had to make, and I think I said that last week. But um, it continues to get harder, right? Yeah, now. well, for sure. Um, so, I mean, some of my all, and I'm not even going to say all time favorite Nightwish songs. Some of my all time favorite songs are on this album. Um, Stargazers, Gethsemane, The Riddler, uh, which, by the way, I think is an incredibly underrated Nightwish song. Um, Walking in the Air, even like the added tracks like Sleeping Sun and Night Quest. I mean, every song is awesome. Um, but for me, if I had to pick one, I I go with Passion in the Opera. Um, nice. it, it starts off with just a really killer guitar riff by Empu. And um, it's just this really awesome, like, power metal song. But then it just, like, kind of slows down. And it's just kind of like a showcase of Floor's operatic. I'm sorry, excuse me, Floor. Taria's operatic vocals. Um, I feel like this song kind of just is, like, a little bit of everything of what Nightwish was doing in 1998. Um, I think it's a really fantastic song. But, I mean, you could close your eyes and point to and pick any one song from this album and, and you're going to get a really great song. So I think what you're saying is listen to the whole thing because you're just doing yourself a disservice if you only listen to one or two tracks. I think I think that's... I, I don't think that's um, an overstatement at all, uh, honestly. I, I think that the entire album is so genre-defining and so um, unique for its time that it, it really is worth an, an entire listen. Um Scale of one to ten, where does this fall for you? And I have a feeling it's going to be pretty high. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, as you were saying, like, you know, as Imaginarium is your favorite Nightwish album, I feel like between this and Imaginarium and probably Wishmaster, like any day of the week, it could be one of those three for me. Um, so, I mean, in all honesty, like this, this album is a 9.5 for me. All right. As close to perfect as you can get without being an absolute perfect album, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that like the devil in the deep dark ocean is maybe like the we- the weakest song on the album. Um, it's still very good, but it, like maybe it's just like that one kind of weak link where every other song is really phenomenal. Um, so for that, I don't know that I would call it a perfect album, but it's pretty darn close. I, I totally agree. I think that just because of the fact that the album was such a trendsetter, it, it's that alone. You have to rank it high. And I think that anyone that listens to this that's a fan of symphonic metal will see that this is really kind of like where it all started. And, and that, it's not to say that the debut album wasn't good or anything like that, but they really just took such a step up with this album that... Um, this is kind of where it all started in 1998. And I guess, again, you have to think about what was coming out at the time. Other than bands like Within Temptation, there really wasn't that much symphonic metal being released uh, with female vocals. There was some, and, and maybe at some point we could do a deep dive into just, you know, the, the, the mid to late 90s symphonic metal scene. Happy to do that. But this particular album, I think, was just an absolute, like, it was a trendsetter. This this it paved the way for so much. For me, I, I can't say it's a nine point five just because I I, I I have that in such rarefied air that I very few albums I think get to that point for me. This is like an eight or an eight point two five. Um it's it's just top to bottom. Every song is phenomenal. Uh even the ones that are a little bit uh you know, uh, maybe not, 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 not the absolute pinnacle of, of, of Nightwish at this time are still fantastic songs. And, and the only thing that holds it back, in my opinion, is quite frankly, I, I think I just, A, I wanted a little bit more and B, there was just one or two tracks that I just don't particularly love. And that's what holds it back a little bit. But I, I actually will say this. I like the album more now than I did 20 years ago or 22 years ago when I first heard it. It's, it's, it's it's that good it, and it holds up exceptionally well i i think that's high praise i mean i, I think um you miss marco i mean like marco's become such a, a such a huge part of the band both vocally and as their bass player so like i think that when you go back to some of those albums prior to him joining the band um you you kind of miss like having those that 
iconic male Nightwish voice. Sure. Um, but I don't know. Like to me, like this uh, this album is just. I, I I think that had you asked me to rate it before I listened to it this week, I may have said like eight point five or nine. But having listened to it twice today, it just was a reminder to me. And and songs that like I always kind of just saw as like you know appetizers to the main course i guess you could say mm-hmm. i found myself really enjoying them more than than ever uh listening it to, to today like uh, it's and that speaks volumes about a 22 year old album uh, and you know how much it, it holds up um you know 22 years later i i just really enjoyed getting to to listen to this again and and then again <laughs> not, uh, thank you for for selecting it because had you not chosen this album, I'm not sure when I would have listened to it again. Just because there's so much out there, both the new stuff that comes out on a daily basis, it seems, and older albums that I just you know there's just not enough time in the day. So uh, that's why we're doing this, and that's why we enjoy we, we invite everyone to join us when we take these deep dives into 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 albums, both past and present. Um, and I'll also say this. To everyone out there that's listening, again, we, we appreciate all the uh, the love and support and, and all the kind words that everyone has been telling us, uh, both on and offline. We, we, we thank you for that. We hope that you'll continue to join us on this journey. And uh, obviously, you know, we, we ask you to, you know, at this point, I'm happy to say we're on virtually every uh, podcast platform, Apple, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Spotify, etc. So subscribe, leave a positive review if you think that we're doing a good job. And if you have any suggestions... Obviously, send us a message in uh, one of our Facebook or uh, Instagram or uh, Twitter platforms. We'd love to hear from you because without you, you know, it, then it's just two guys talking. But at least we want we want we want to bring everyone into uh, into the audience and let you guys really have a part uh, as to what we what we do and 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 we want to hear your thoughts as well. So uh, that invitation is an open invitation, and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, that said. We uh, we have to do another album next week, and I have one that is going to go in a little bit of a different direction. I'm picking an album for next week, which is one of my favorite albums, which, much like Oceanborn, is, a, uh, is an album that I think inspired quite a bit of what you hear now and what you've been hearing for the last almost 20 years. But I think it's an album which you and I may have differing opinions on, or at the very least, it's not something that I think is necessarily in your wheelhouse, but it's one of the biggest albums of the last 20 years, and that's Blackwater Park by Opeth. Uh, it, it's an album that I have been listening to on and off nonstop for, for 20 years, but it's an album that I'm not sure that you've ever even given its proper due just because of the sheer number of albums that are out there. Uh, you know what? I out of curiosity, I'm going to just take a look at my library here and just see like when the last time I listened to it was. And uh, it looks like it's been, it's been a long time. It's, it's, it's yeah. been a very long time. I, I will say well, that. And, and, and to that end, it's long overdue. Uh, I, I look forward to hearing your thoughts as someone who's not necessarily the biggest Opeth fan in the world, but this album, um, and I don't think I'm giving anything away here. This album is widely regarded as one of the greatest progressive death metal albums of all time. And I'm just very curious to hear you now having been forced to listen to it for the first time in a while to get your thoughts because it's just such a unique record. And it's something that, uh, again, you can hear the influence even to this day with a lot of these uh, progressive death metal bands. Uh, always, co- always copied, but never quite duplicated and i think that's blackwater park at least at least for me so uh with that we uh we bid farewell we hope everyone enjoyed this week's episode give us a shout out on social media give us uh give us a like in your favorite uh you know podcast platform and we'll uh we'll catch up with you next week for blackwater park uh i'm looking forward to it It, um, i'm I'm looking forward to listening to an album that i think this will be the first time where I, i don't really have it's not an album I'd be able to talk about without having to listen to it first. I will say that. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to kind of expanding my horizons a little bit. Um, and uh, I, I second and uh, echo your uh, your comments about thanking everybody and, and, you know, please give us a like or a comment or a review or whatever. Um, I put together a little page on Linktree where you can pretty much fig- find where we are everywhere 
that we exist, uh, just go to linktr.ee slash metal exchange and it will have every uh podcast platform we're on and every social media platform we're on that way we don't have to kind of name all of them um so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it for me so um i guess for uh for the metal exchange uh i'm chris i'm justin and we'll see you next week with blackwater park have a good one take care